Uh, we, we can hear you just fine. Oh, okay. Perfect. And and welcome to Setsos. Setsos also here. To Setsos, Thank you. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How's it? So, um, Dimitri and Tisetso, I just said we, we're going live now to Facebook and um, we are recording now. Um, there we go. Okay. So, I'm going to say a sentence and then hand over to, to Lucas and Ade. All right. All right. We are ready for you and off you go. Great. Hello, everyone. I don't know who we have on the other side, but I know we have in the Zoom room with us um, Cameron, uh, one of the staff members from New Music SA. It's great to be here for our second webinar of the series. Um, here we are streaming to Facebook and um, on the NAF website. Just a shout out to Samro, Samro Foundation, the National Arts Festival, the Arts and Culture Trust, the Rupert Music Foundation, the National Arts Council, all of these great and wonderful organizations and people that have helped us get here. And a welcome to our panelists um, from all parts of South Africa and hopefully all safe and sound and then even someone from America um, as far as I know, everyone else is in South Africa. And um, just, yeah, thanks for being here and let's have a great discussion. And I'll hand over to one of the moderators. Who would like to go first? Um, so I would like to welcome everyone again um, on behalf of um, NMSA. I and my colleague, uh, Mr. Lucas Ligeti, will be uh, moderating this meeting. So, um, Lucas, do you want to go? Uh, sure. Thank you, Adeyemi. And uh, welcome everyone to this, uh, 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 to this webinar, uh, where we will be discussing, um, but not only among the participants <coughs> in the concert, but also, you know, uh, among the audience. And then, of course, we have the National Arts Festival also involved. Um, we will be discussing uh, a concert that we did uh, earlier this year. Uh, I, I believe it was in early March, right? Uh, the uh, first concert of our Digital Indaba. So uh, the Digital Indaba was a, um, a, a series of three concerts uh, that were live events, but that were also streamed uh, and sort of, you know, based on the problems of the, of the current situation, a mixture of a, of a live event with a small audience and um, the possibility to, to watch online. Um, three concerts where for each one we uh, commissioned uh, a, a composer, but also uh, featured music by some other composers and usually built around uh, anniversaries, around something that was relevant to the year 2021 in an anniversary uh, sense. So um, in this case, we uh, uh, we're at the uh, Trevor Huddleston Center in uh, Sophia Town, uh, which is a place that uh, Todd Machikiza had a, a very important relationship with. And we were celebrating his music uh, together with music by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, because since we're new music South Africa, Mozart is a typical uh, composer for us to feature on our concerts. I guess I'm just kidding. But it's always good, I think, to uh, create links with the history as well. But then also with a brand new piece by uh, Dimitri Boudouris. And uh, with that, let me hand it back to Ade. I think he's muted. Dimitri. Oh, yes. Can you hear me? 
I can hear you, okay. but I can't hear our day. Um, I am speaking. I'm not sure if you can. Yes, I can hear you now. Oh, great stuff. Great stuff. Thank you. Um, first of all, um, I don't know how official this will be, but first of all, for me personally, one of the things, I mean, just briefly, I would like to know who is um, Dimitri Vodoris, just maybe in a very, in a nutshell, if you can tell okay. us who this person is. Okay, I'm a clinical pharmacist. Uh, I'm also a composer, uh, and I was uh, involved in 2005 uh, directing the, the Unyazi 2005 festival. Uh, and basically, since then, uh, I've been both a composer and a pharmacist. Hmm? Hello? Hi, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, 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 I can hear you now. I don't know, for some, my network keeps going off and on. Do you... All right, but you can... Did, uh, um... Are they hear me? Should I repeat what I said? I could hear it. Yes, please, please. I don't know why okay. my network is so bad around this time. Please, if you can. All right. I, I'm a pharmacist, a clinical pharmacist by profession. I'm also a composer. And I was involved in 2005 uh, with uh, organizing the 2005 Unyazi Festival. Mm. Um, so that's basically who I am in a nutshell. Uh, can I, may I add something to that? Uh, because Dimitri is yeah. giving a very modest uh, self uh, introduction here. And uh, I would like to say a couple of things, Dimitri, if I may, and you correct me, please, if I'm, if I'm wrong. But, sure. uh, well, first of all, Dimitri is mostly a composer of electronic music of a very experimental nature. Uh, and he's uh, a, a quite innovative uh, electronic music composer and also uh, innovative in the incredible knowledge that he has of experimental music of the current time and the, you know, the last several decades, let's say his lifetime. Dimitri actually, again, uh, the series has a kind of an anniversary aspect and Dimitri, uh, is uh, uh, celebrating uh, his 60th birthday uh, in 2021. But then I also want to say something about this uh, 2005 Unyazi Festival. So essentially New Music Essay, since it started to exist a little bit over 20 years ago, uh, has in most years uh, organized a music festival. And initially these were called Indaba, and then the idea of the Unyazi Electronic Music Festival was created. And that festival in 2005 was the first Unyazi Electronic Music Festival. And since then, it's kind of been an alternation between Unyazi and Indaba festivals. In 2020, we did not have a festival because of COVID. And we decided also in 2021 to go with a um, uh, with, with, with a, let's say, uh, not a festival, but rather many smaller events that seems to be a more realistic approach right now. And for many reasons, I actually also like this approach. However, none of the people who are involved in running New Music SA today were already involved in it uh, in 2005. But I was involved in the 2005 Unyazi Festival as a musician. Uh, Dimitri invited me uh, out of the blue, I'd never heard of Dimitri uh, before, and suddenly I had an email from Dimitri inviting me to come to Johannesburg and play at this festival. And I'd been to Johannesburg once before and considered it to be a particularly interesting and inspiring city. So I was very happy to have uh, this, to get this invitation. However, that did not prepare me for what I experienced at this 2005 Unyazi Festival. And I think that I'm not exaggerating Great if stuff. I say that this was an absolutely historic event in, uh, let's say, the, the story of experimental or, or new music in Africa. 
Uh, I don't think that there had ever been a festival like this before. And frankly, I don't think there has been since. It was an electronic music festival of the widest possible scope, both aesthetically and um, as, as far as the, the countries of origin of the, the people who were participating. So there were a lot of people locally, but uh, there were also people from all over the world, some really important innovators in electronic music, some people who were completely unknown. And all of this was mixed in a completely egalitarian way and curated in a very, very, you know, in a way that just suggested a lot of knowledge and a lot of breadth. And it was really, I think, to me, a, a complete breakthrough, this festival. And I think to put, to give credit where it's due, at least to me as a participating artist, it seemed like Dimitri curated this, well, he said he was one of a team, but I, I'm going to say that he was, he definitely took the lead as far as I uh, I can see, and that a lot of the ideas were his, and that also a lot of the incredible legwork that is uh, necessary for organizing something like that in all its aspects. I think that he did, seems to me, a very large uh, part of that. And uh, um, that really kicked something off. And then certain events happened that led to, uh, uh, you know, I think in South Africa, we sometimes mm -hmm have a, a, a trouble, problem maintaining teamwork for a long time. And uh, so somehow the consequence of this was that Dimitri sort of withdrew a, a lot from the scene. And since New Music SA has now after a, a, you know, a little bit uh, less active couple of years, although we've been having our festivals, but always in a very modest way, uh, is now coming out and doing a lot of new activities again uh, and with much bigger plans. Uh, we actually thought that uh, it, uh, it is uh, necessary to sort of um, get Dimitri involved again as really the curator of this extremely important event. And uh, we're really very, very happy that he agreed to be our first commission composer in 2021 at very short notice, I should say, wrote a piece very quickly. Uh, and it was a very adventurous piece in his usual adventurous, uh, you know, with his usual adventurous way of going about things. And uh, I, I really do hope that uh, Dimitri can, uh, even if maybe he, you know, he's able to make his living as a pharmacist, I really think that, that it's time for him to get uh, the uh, requisite recognition as a, as a composer and as a kind of a new music inspiration in South Africa as well. So sorry for this lengthy introduction, but uh, uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to, to set that record straight uh, because I think that Dimitri is a modest person who's not going to um, <laughs> talk about himself like that. I see, I see that. Thanks a lot, Thanks, Lucas, Lucas. For, for bringing all that in. And I think it... Um, for me personally, it also covered, you covered a lot of uh, uh, what I was, uh, I've been thinking about, uh, probably I was hoping he would say, and, and that's really great. However, I mean, before we really jump into the composition itself that, uh, that we were privileged to hear, I think um, it would be nice to know as a pharmacist, um, Dimitri, what yes. um, what this time has been for you, especially with with uh, the pandemic? You know, vaccines coming in. You might be one of the people involved in all this process. Just on on as a person, what how has that been? Uh, it's uh, I'm actually connecting with you uh, from work because I work uh, fourteen to fifteen hour shifts a day. Um, you know, trying to sort out because. Uh, I, um, I regulate a whole lot of pharmacies in in hospitals, and yes, uh, the, this pandemic has been a total nightmare. And hopefully, we can see a bit of uh, light at the end of the tunnel. You know, things are are shaping up very slowly, but uh, we're getting there. You know, to uh, vaccinate all people and to address all other conditions because everything seems to follow. Uh, the COVID-19 and everything else, all the other diseases seem to be by the way. So um, 
They're not, by the way. They're, they're just as important as COVID-19, but COVID-19 is under the spotlight at the moment. So that uh, seems to get more attention than anything else. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Yes. And I, as, um, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, uh, you you stand in a position where you you are somehow, I mean, as a composer, you know, trying to, um, through that composition of yours, you know, trying to um, affect, uh, bring in some, some, um, if I could call it solace, and you know, artistically, and then you are also on the medical side, you know, helping. I yes. think um, you. This is really a great position to be. Um, uh, that's so, absolutely yes. amazing because you know a lot of the theories in in. Uh, biology, a lot of the mechanisms in biology I use in my composition and I convert those into uh, vehicles to form notation. Mm -hmm. So it's very complex, but that's what I do and I use mathematical formulae to get to the end result. Mm. Okay, sorry, to, just to pick your brain a little bit on that. Um, without necessarily jumping ahead of what I, I was hoping to ask in you. But yes. could you, with, maybe without going into intricate detail, could you just give us an example of what you just spoke about now, you know, how practically, how that comes out practically? Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm always aware, whenever I create electronic music, for it to have, because... Um, in my music, uh, if you listen to comp computer music, you don't feel the emotional part coming out. So you, uh, you can't connect on an emotional level to electronic music. Mm. So what I do is I, uh, the aesthetics of the emotion come from uh, organic sources. So I try to create electronic music in in the most organic form in my knowledge so um, that's why I use what I said uh, ideas from pharmacy from biology to link to to what I'm doing and never forgetting to always link back because everything in nature works uh, in accordance to that, you can have a beat going 100 uh, times around the bend, but like at the end of the day, it's how your ears reflect to nature, how we uh, uh, connect to nature. So my music, I feel to me, is when uh, I, I've achieved that. I've almost achieved that, but um, that's the way I perceive it, you know, to let it play out and, and then for you to experience an organic source coming out of the speakers, N not an um, inorganic cold source, which you cannot connect with emotionally. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Um, Lucas, so, looks like uh, you want to say something. That's... Yeah. Luca, may I piggyback on there with a question uh, about this, uh, Dimitri? Can I ask you something? Yes, about this? sure. How's it, Lucas? <laughs> How are you? Um, I'm wondering. You're saying that one can't connect emotionally uh, immediately with electronic music or directly. I'm wondering why you're saying that is, or why you why you feel that that is so. Uh, how? Why would it be harder to connect with electronic music than with non-electronic music? Particularly, if I if I may make two arguments to 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 challenge this notion, just to to say some things that I'm thinking right here. When we hear, uh, I don't know, Mozart or Machikiza or music by uh, other uh, non-electronic uh, composers over a stereo, we are hearing this uh, through loudspeakers and essentially uh, through that, in a certain sense, it becomes electronic music or not. Um, you know, that's one, one, yes. one question. Uh, and another one is 
in our, in our bodies, in our brains. We have electrochemical reactions happening at any time. So isn't, the, isn't electronic music actually just as, let's say potentially organic uh, as um, non-electronic music? It's just that it's harnessed in a different way. Um, the electronics is harnessed in a different way. So I'm wondering wh why, why you feel that it is that we don't connect emotionally with electronic music. Uh, that's interesting, Lucas, that you say that because I've uh, battled with this idea of how people, uh, you see electro electronic music, electronic uh, computer music, not electroacoustic music, tends to be the most sought, uh, uh, the most um, the art form that gets listened to most rarely. Okay, there's a group. Uh, there's a group of people worldwide that just listen to that type of music, but the majority of people would like uh, not listen to that. They would like to listen to an orchestra in electronics, but not to um, electro electronic music um, or uh, music concrete. You could say. So I would, my idea is, okay, if that is the case, what is it that uh, doesn't allow people to listen to uh, the most advanced form of uh, experimentation uh, on speakers? Okay, so I, 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 I've thought about it, I've listened to different types of music, and I find that out of, say, um, a percentage of, of electronic music that gets uh, transposed on, on speakers is uh, or too advanced uh, to listen to and also too cold, so impersonal. So uh, when I create music, I've tried to uh, incorporate this uh, organic, uh, you know, the organic feel uh, into music, which somehow uh, people respond, uh, and especially coming from Africa, um, it's, uh, you know, my my initial work that you heard at Unyazi 2005 uh, um, on uh, in the room. It was incredible, you know, uh, it, N NAPF. I three that um, is for marimba xylophone and electronics it, it tended to be more accessible uh, although uh, not lacking the experimentation in that form I don't know I just feel personally maybe I can't explain it but like mm -hmm. I, I feel that electronic music lacks uh, the organic element or how it's created or is it the mm. machinery if it is um, I don't know the processing I don't know mm. maybe it feels uh, less direct somehow because the the, uh, the the act of performing it is maybe it feels like there's a, a degree of separation from the um, emotional intuition of a person. I don't know. Uh, I, it's a really uh, um, daunting question for me also as a composer who composes both electronic and non-electronic music. I like both equally much. Uh, and in many ways, I don't differentiate, but I think that each one opens up. Um, I wouldn't, for me, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's, uh, uh, more advanced the electronic music, but I would I would say it's different, and it opens up different possibilities that are where different questions can be addressed. But it's a really uh, fascinating um, topic. Uh, there's a in looking at the chat window, um, uh, Cameron was uh, uh, wondering what Waldo thinks about that being an electronic instrument specialist, and I also wanted to ask how, uh, of course, the the piece by Dimitri was a collaboration with Waldo Alexander, the violinist, is a piece for violin and electronics. So mm -hmm. I, I was wondering, uh, Ade, if that's okay with you, we, maybe we can ask them how they both 
yeah, you know, sure. felt about, you know, experienced this collaboration. Uh, and particularly, I think for both of them, it was quite a new experience. In the, even though Waldo works a lot with electronics, it was a very different approach. And I think for Dimitri, it was the first piece for, for violin with electronics, if I'm not mistaken. So yes. how do both of you feel about this? Uh, yeah. What did Thank you discover you. in this collaboration? Yeah. Thank you, Lucas. Um, yes, that is definitely a good question. And I, um, I was planning to get there, however, I, I thought that it might be nice for uh, Dimitri to first of all tell us about this panda ray. What is it really? Before maybe they tell us what it was like working together on it. You know, where does it come from? Um, and this is, I know there must have been program notes at the events, but yes. this is for people who will be watching this in future. You know, what is, what is this panda ray if I'm pronouncing it well? And uh, I mean, if yep. yes, uh, okay. Uh, I just want to mention to all of you that there's writings, more intense writings, on the work uh, on my website um, under. Uh, you know, I send a circular to Cameron uh, to cir circulate amongst you if you want to go more and read more about the work, but I'm. Uh, the, uh, I'm just saying that there is something available. So I, I'm going to quickly mention to you what it's all about. Okay, it's um, uh, uh, the electronic section was composed from weaving data. So, so I received uh, images of uh, different weaving patterns, different colors, different spacings of, of the fabric dimensions related to weaving types, angular, horizontal, vertical threading. And, um, and that's what the electronic section was composed of because since 2006, I've been working on uh, with data. When I mentioned earlier that I use mathematics to translate the, uh, those um, happenings into uh, into mathematical calculations and then into notation, uh, that is what I was talking about. Mm. So the electronic bit was created from uh, that data, was sourced out of that data. And I used two types of software, uh, a newly developed software that, that I got from the University of Poland. And um, uh, and I link that to MATLAB, which is a mathematical processing engine. So then I, I, uh, I work through that, um, all, all the positioning of the notes, left to right, center, the col colors uh, were incorporated into the different strings of the violin. So the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the notation, um, it was, um, I just want to check here to tell you exactly what I mean. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, the notation was uh, between the open strings uh, was manipulated using different forms of uh, playing and extended playing. Uh, techniques and um, and uh, what is pandare? Pandare is basically uh, the term meaning all is flux. So I I listened to this piece continuously, and I found that repeated oral uh, minimalistic. It's my first uh, piece that that repeats itself in, in a in a mi micro uh, environment. So you feel it doesn't repeat itself, but it repeats itself. And yet uh, in its sonic mass, it seems to move in, in reverse, challenging time and concentration by reducing its logical existence in space. Thus uh, the term all is flux, which, which comes from the ancient Greek uh, meaning, uh, uh, Pandare. So that's where the term, term comes from. 
Uh, great stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. And I think um, um, following on that will be um, Lucas's um, question. Yes. You know. Um, about, I think it would be to you and um, to Wilder as well, you know, what and, was it like? Um, and I want to, to tell you that, yeah. that, that both uh, the electronic uh, bit was taken from uh, the uh, automated systems, the modern automated systems, the data, and the, the data from the manual systems was used to construct the violin part. Oh. So you had oh, wow. the contrast in the first first section. You see, it was divided into two sections. So mm -hmm. the first section was electronics mm -hmm. and violin, um, manual da data versus electronic data, like uh, opposing each other. And then the last bit was done basi uh, basically fr from was sourced from uh, ma um, uh, manual data. Okay, that's what okay. I wanted to put so you, that, that you we can clear the ground. Okay, well, I mean, it sounds like a lot of technical stuff for me at the moment. I'm not sure about everyone else um, in the webinar now, but um, I think it'll be nice to move on to uh, that question that Lucas wanted to know. I think uh, first of all would be uh, what was it like working on on this project, and also probably inquiring from Waldo about the whole emotional response thing to um, to electronic music you get. Yeah. So Lucas, I'm not sure if I'm if I'm articulating your question correctly. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm not sure uh, Dimitri if you want to answer first or Waldo if you are if you like um, to answer I'm here. First. Dimitri do you want to do you want to go first? I'll, uh, I'll no, you, you speak first. You spe How's oh, it, Walter? Okay. How's it, Dimitri? Like, um, <laughs> um, sorry, just to um, recap, the question was about um, the experience for a, for a player I, yes. slash instrumentalist um, when it comes to to working in the more more electronic medium. Um, yes, and also what you feel about you know emotional response to. To, to electronic music as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. Well, okay. Let's 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 go with my my experience <laughs> first. So that, just, just we could talk for days on this. Um, you know, as far as the experience of working together with Dimitri is concerned, this is the first time that he and I met and worked together. You know, this I I'm ashamed to say I had no prior knowledge of, of his work. You know, until um, uh, you know, Lucas and Cameron contacted me um, with regards to this this um, uh, this event. Um, so, so the experience, and you know, the the varying sort of let's let's just call them levels for now. It's not really the correct term. You know, when it comes to an instrumentalist, an analog instrumentalist um, being taking part in an electronic piece of music, um, you can get the one side where you'll play the analog instrument, it'll be mic'd up, and somehow the frequencies that come out of the instrument actually trigger stuff in the electronic software. This, this wasn't the case with, with Dimitri's work. I think everybody understands by now that with with this particular piece that the the electronic side was pre-composed, and you know the the violin in this case was was a separate. Um, they they function separately, but obviously need, needed to be performed together. Um, so, you know, for for the the emotional side of things. In my experience with with electronic music, what and this is just just for me, you know, what, what I need as a as a as a player, um, if one doesn't have enough information on the page, or if you're lazy and you haven't done your research on the composer, or 
also if you're inexperienced, a, a little less experienced in that particular field of music, the, the greatest sort of um, asset or approach one, one, one can have is the opportunity to work face to face with the composer, which thankfully Dimitri and I had. Um, because you know, initially when when the music was sent to me, I thought I I thought I kind of got 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 the vibe, and I started practicing, and we we met, and then I realized very quickly, oh okay, right, um, this is a completely different realm, something that I've that I've never experienced before. Um, so, you know, obviously the the. Well, not obviously, but the, the first reaction is a bit of a bit of fear and panic and a little accompanied with a bit of shame, but then also a great deal of excitement and intrigue because, like I said, especially when it comes to Dimitri's style of, of composition, I'm very, very inexperienced um, and haven't been exposed to well, nothing, nothing of that level. Um, so, you know, it it very quickly developed into a, into a collaborative, into a, quite an intensely collaborative process with um, Dimitri helping me understand what, what the process is in terms of the composition. And then me helping him um, understand what's, what is possible on, on an instrument in terms of extended techniques and also figuring out new things. Um, so, you know, it was like two little kids playing together. <laughs> um, as far as what um, you were talking about a little bit earlier on with uh, Lucas, Lucas and Dimitri were, were discussing why electronic composition seems to be less, uh, have, have less of, of, a, of a following or, or gain the least attention, you know, or, or far less attention. I understand what Dimitri was saying ab about it almost being Im impersonal in a way because there is there is nothing organic to latch onto. Um, but I, yeah, again, I, I think the, the 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 interpretation, the attitude, and the response towards electronic composition is always up to the individual listener for starters. Um, and then also, is there, is there information? Um, does one have liner notes? Does one have a program, you know, program notes to listen to, et cetera, et cetera. Sorry, now I'm just waffling. Dimitri, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, thanks, uh, Waldo. Uh, yeah, it's... Um... I found, you know, when uh, when when I met with Waldo, he, he, um, the the violin playing, um, I asked him to to have a different dimension in uh, in some of the uh, the, uh, the the sections played, and um, for for instance, like I asked him to play a more a raw sound out of the violin, out of the com conventional side, and um, uh, and he managed to do that. I was uh, absolutely. I actually f phoned him uh, some time after the the event, and I, I told him how wonderful the piece was, uh, having not having listened to it for three months, uh, and listen uh, listening to it again, and. Gosh, I was like uh, a mind blown, you know. Uh, thanks, Waldo. You really <laughs> played incredibly. It's it's my yeah. absolute pleasure. Thank you, Dimitri. I mean, I I I'm I'm always sort of of the attitude of one one wishes one could have done more and done it done it better, but um, you know, I also listened to it also only about three months after the the, the concert, and I. I, I I must say, it would be lovely, especially the the second part of of Pandora to 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 for me to work on that again, um, yes. you know, get the 
especially the the jagged weaving um, kind of effect that 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 you that you that was one of the most specific um, elements of that piece to really really kind of nail that and and convey that to the listener. Um, yeah, uh, I was actually uh, I instructed him, you know, to play like as if he was weaving, like, like the weaving machine. So uh, th those. Uh, arm extensions had to portray that type of um, a feel and gi give uh, the listener something to connect with, uh, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Uh, I oh, think okay. I'm being muted. <laughs> Is All it? right, so, yeah, now, um, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. Um, so th there is something that you touched on there, um, Dimitri, which I think I would like to um, inquire about a little bit more. And um, of course, there are so two things in my mind. And one of my perspective in this question is really about the idea of African music, not just being the sound of the instrument of the players, also um, including the audience, you know, the space, et cetera, and, and the event, what it is about. And, and so, so because of that reason, I would like also to bring in the other guys that performed on the day, um, Yonela and Tisetso, um, into this question. So, and here's the question. I often find that, that long after you have performed a piece as intense as, um, as something like yours, it, the piece continues to swim around in your head, um, in your mind, as you probably engage with other works, you know, whether they are musical or not, you know, but it sort of continues to work in your mind. While though you, I'm sure you've probably experienced this uh, a lot. So, and as those work in your mind and in new spaces, they tend to accrue new meanings. All right, so I thought I'll ask you that since you performed the piece, and I mean, it's nice that Dimitri, you mentioned uh, about going to watch the game. Um, so are there things that have changed for you in terms of how you see the piece in retrospect? And will that affect your approach to music, to the music if you play it again? I mean, that would be for the performance. Will, will that, if you go, if you think about it in retrospect now, are there, th how you feel about the piece now. So if you are to approach the music again, what are the things that you, I mean, even if it's just ideological I ideas that um, you could bring into the work? Uh, I wouldn't compose, uh, compose the piece again or change anything in the piece, but li like Waldo said, he would like to perform uh, a more organized, a little bit better, some parts that weren't um, uh, completely <clears throat> a, as I expected, but they were very much acceptable. Uh, I, I just um, feel that from, uh, you see, if you ask an electronic composer to, to adjust things, um, it's really done, but like um, the in electroacoustic music, the acoustic uh, instruments need to gel together with the electronics so that uh, they need to weave together. So um, with uh, Waldus playing, I think uh, if we had to play the piece again, uh, he would perform it even better. And the third time, even much better, and then uh, that's how it would go on and on. Because mm -hmm. according uh, according to us now, we, we've got the first source of the material. So uh, we're saying, okay, we're judging it on that uh, perspective. But like, if it gets played uh, three or four or five times more, uh, it, it will only get better because uh, the acoustic side will... Uh, blend even more intensely with the piece, with the electronic bits. Hello? 
Hello. Hello. <laughs> Has everybody disappeared? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, I think can hear you. I think his internet might have just frozen. Uh, Hmm. What do you say, oh, oh, Lucas? I was struggling to. Okay, as I said before. Oh. Um, so, as I said before, I think um, just in terms of um, being there, I mean, for me as an audience, you know, I'm so trying to think before, back I mean, to how I felt, to... you know, um, how I experienced the music. But it would be nice to hear from the other performers. So, um, how they experience this music on them. They so, she said so, um, Yonela. So I, I don't even know if I'm unmuted. Oh, I can hear you. Yeah. Um, I would have liked to go after this year because I think he played the music first. Of course, I mean, otherwise, you know, I'm op opinionated like everybody else. So maybe I'm <laughs> can teach it to go first, then I, I you know I can just say my impression. So. Okay. Thank you, Yonela. Tisetso, you have the floor. Hi everyone. Uh, hello. Hi. So um, I, I think um, I might have had some uh, a similar experience to some of the players where I feel um I would really love to perform the music again because um, with us, the, the more you perform the music, the more you get to understand the music. You know, it's not about just getting the notes right, but also getting to understand the what the composer really was thinking about and the songs maybe they might be imagining that would have come out of our instruments. Mm. Yeah, so I, I'd love to get another chance because I actually only got to discuss with the composer after the concert. Mm. Yeah, so um, it'll be great to actually maybe get a chance to do it again. Um, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Um. She said, so I think we were hearing you up until the time you muted now. Um, but I think, um, um, uh, Yonela, you can go now. She said, so thanks for, for jumping in there. Well, yeah, I mean, you, uh, you mentioned Two things. I mean, I didn't really engage quite critically with the music uh, necessarily, but um, really the two things that uh, interests me as both a scholar and you know and and, and a, a performer. Um, in the sense that I mean, you you talked about you know African African music. You know, it's always there's always those political questions of power because for me it uh you know africa has always been kind of like you know it's like a mine uh, uh, african music has been an idiom where people have kind of like kept on coming and saying no 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 the, we can take this and put it on whatever that we've got somehow it, it's always been african elements you know there's never really um, been, say, compositions in an African idiom where other things are borrowed into it. It's always been a subjugated uh, well or bank where it's like an accessory kind of thing. I would be curious whether it's possible to, to, to say, have people that are really, really basing their composition of course on, on you know from an African aesthetic and using other ele elements uh, from an, an electronic point of view um I'm just I, I, you know commenting based on on what you're saying Ade, in the sense that it has always been funny for me 
mm. uh, that a lot of composition, you know what they call it, it used to be orientalism, the fact that other musics have always been uh, ornaments where that could be put on the, what is supposed to be the main music and they seem to legitimize themselves into specific spaces. I think it is for all of us to kind of contemplate whether even after this many, many years, uh, we still are going to have our, you know, our music as just ornaments. Um, you know, whether we can have our students, students that graduate uh, with a mastery on African music rather than just a peremptory glance at small, you know, small aspects of Africanness and, 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 and make our music African. I think the second aspect, of course, that I want to talk about as well is, you know, the relationship of, of you know, a, a, a performer, you know, to a composer. Uh, I know mostly in the classical sense that the performer, you know, is generally mostly a subject who's supposed to okay, you know, like try to, to submit to the composer's expectations. Obviously, I look at it for me, I mean, as, as a journalist who believe that uh, my, my, you know, performance is also an act of, 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 of reinterpretation and an act of composition. Whereas, of course, in this case, it's a fact that the performer actually have to uh, be as absolutely uh, accurate to the composer's expectations, which of course leaves no room uh, for a performer to say something. I think maybe it's something that we we'll have to think about um, mm -hmm. whether the electronics are basically the standard that always has to be met by, by composers. It, is it possible that the performer um, is able to impact the music such that it moves an electronic uh, composition mm -hmm. to another aspect beyond where, what has been perceived? Whether mm. we're able to collaborate in that fair, in that sense, so but I mean that's why I'm just these are just my opinions, uh, mm. you know, from a point of from a, in a much more liberated sense. Mm. You're talking of improvisation, yeah. No, I'm talking. I'm talking generally as in terms of performance, it because also I know even with classical. Uh, in classical performance, it is all, it always rather than play the notes like Tisa was saying, it also has to do with interpretation. I wonder how like between the composer and the performer, who really really sets the expectation of the rightness of the interpretation of a piece. Mm. You know? mm. Mm. Yeah. Definitely, um, mm. I know this this. Um, uh, these discussions, I mean, they run deep, even from a um, musicology perspective. You know, there are debates on um, should a performer be seeking to to uh, to realize the intentions of the composer. You know, where does the authority stop? Does the authority stop with the composer or with the performer? You know, so if the performer is just there yeah. to realize what the composer does, you know, so who is the performer? You know, I think it was yeah. uh, Nicholas Cook who compared the performer. Yes, to yes, the, like, yes, yes. Nicholas was, was fun. But I think I'd like to, for us to think beyond that, I, I'd like us to think beyond the power politics, beyond the hierarchy. I'd like us to figure out if it is pos possible that the performer is able to to inspire the composition much more in, in a much more deeper way, in a way that mm. would put the music beyond what is expected of it. Mm. Well, well I can say this much that uh, um, uh, to answer your question that uh, Waldo's playing uh, uh -huh. can, uh, that's what I said, uh, to perform it again and again so that his uh, violin playing would weave uh, into the electronics. So, so 
uh, in other words, Waldo's performance uh, can improve uh, over numerous um, uh, performances. So uh, to answer your question, yes. Uh, in that case, uh, the uh, um, Waldo, uh, the violin playing, uh, could actually perform better and better and better uh, as mm. uh, there's a new performance. Mm. Thank yes, you. Sorry, so just, yeah, just yeah. as a last thing, what, what I was trying to gesture as well, like most to add is, is, is whether, um, whether the electronic sensors would be, would be expected to improve in themselves or they are the actual barometer of the, of, you know, of the music. Mm. That's just bad. Yes. Mm. Uh, you see- Why, uh, why is problem... it that the performer is expected to improve uh, than, than the, actual, the actual written music? Yeah. Okay, in, I'm done. Uh, in, the, in this case, it's, uh, in this case of the of of Pandere, it's the electronics are set, uh, uh -huh. they are pre-composed. So now it's for the performer to to meet the standards of the electronics and uh, and to weave the violin into a position where it's unrecognizable between uh, any like array or fault or anything like that. May I butt in with a mm. quick, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 Lucas? Questions or, or remarks. But just in response to what Yonela was saying before, because I think he made a couple of very important points. I think um, composing music, uh, experimental music based on African concepts, whatever that means, because Africa is such a huge continent with so many different uh, types of music and, and different cultures. So uh, I, you know, that is uh, the, the whole idea of African music is already in that sense a little bit fraught because it, it, you, know, you have to then I think specify a little more what you're talking about. But I also would say that uh, uh, I find that to be an incredibly interesting um, uh, idea. And uh, I, I, it's something that I've been doing for the past you know, more than 30 years, basically in my own music. Um, concepts from African cultural traditions are foundationally important to the structure of the, of the music. So it's not ornamental at all, but it's in the deep structure of the music. And actually the reason why I, you know, not coming from Africa originally uh, and find myself on this panel and involved with the University of Pretoria and living part of the year in South Africa these days is actually a consequence of my interest in, in African music and, and, and uh, you know, using concepts that basically my own thing is that I, I learn about African music and other musics too, but African music has proved to be particularly important to me. And I um, ask myself the question, okay, now having learned this information, what kinds of independent original ideas can I now come up with that are not an imitation of the African music, but that are somehow still conceptually based on it. And I think this is a direction I'm hoping you know, also New Music SA, because I think that South Africa is a culture, it's, it's in an extremely unique cultural position, being part of Africa and at the same time culturally also very connected to the West. So I think there's a unique confluence of, of, of cultural uh, opportunities in South Africa. And I think like a, as an organization like New Music South Africa, I think that is for me why I'm involved because it's something that I would like to sort of promote this idea that, that you know, we share humanity. It's uh, it's not uh, um, that these cultures are so in, uh, different or contradictory to each other. We have very, very, very much in common around the world, but there are also important differences, and we can learn from each other and build artistic ideas on these different concepts. And I also want to say that I think that African music is actually not at all in a subaltern position, uh, actually, in the world, because I think that you know, 99% of popular music based on, you know, from around the world is based on ideas that came from Africa to the Americas with, you know, the slave uh, trade and then through America basically conquered the world. Now, it would be a very nice thing if uh, Africa could reap a little bit more of the financial benefits and things like that of, of this development, but be that as it may, 
I think that African music is everywhere in the world and 99% of musicians actually who create pop music or, or jazz and things like that, they are uh, creating based on an African soil, an African conceptual soil. And in that sense, I'm absolutely no exception. Maybe the anomaly is that I tend to do this in an experimental art music a situation that normally is very Western based. But I think that again, that the cultures have you know, come together. And, and of course, jazz is a, is a music that ex cannot exist with, without the African contribution, but also the European contribution, because in America at the time of, of slavery, all these, these the, you know, some of these cultures were suppressed, but still made their way into the musical vocabulary. And then others came from another side and everything got kind of mixed together. And then this unique uh, type of music we know as jazz, which was so hard to define, uh, can uh, develop. But then, of course, in South Africa, jazz has come to be very much its own thing. And uh, I'm really interested, for example, from, from, uh, to, to, to ask Yonela as, a, you know, as, a, as somebody who, who does a lot of jazz playing, uh, which I'm, I'm a drummer, so I, I also play jazz. Uh, but Yonela, how, how, how did you feel about this very, you know, unusual, let's say, curatorial contrast that we had, this mixture of uh, Vuduris, Machikiza, uh, Nana, uh, the Mozart, uh, um, how, how did you feel as an improviser in this context of otherwise mostly scored music, uh, playing, uh, playing an improvisation, of course, based on uh, a compositional foundation from Machikiza, but 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 still, um, how do you feel that you can contextualize or that your playing changed as a reaction to this this very unusual context? Mm. Well, I, I suppose I mean at the most I could say it's exciting um, in a sense that, uh, like you were saying, I mean as as performers. We've always, apart from just the fundamental African kind of musical principles that come there subconsciously in the play, uh, most of the, uh, most of, you know, instrumentalists tend to feel that they get improved uh, when they learn a lot of, a lot of classical techniques. Uh, so there's always been that looking to Western music for much more, for, you know, technical improvement in other, in, in other musical things. I mean, people like Duke Ellington and them have always kind of like went to, to, to learn from those reservoirs to be able to, to, to develop their music much more further. So this time it's a different thing. At least this time we can have an institution that is previously based on classical stuff that, that uh, permits all other uh, different aspects. It might be slightly belated, I mean, in, 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 in our South African history. I mean, I, th I think it's something that could have uh, happened before. I mean, if I look at a person like uh, Todd Machigiza, who, who has been a very, very uh, great master of, of, of choralism and then a composer in himself, I think, in fact, it is the most basic instinct of, of a lot of Black South African musicians that um, we get to become everything in one. We, we, I mean, I know, I'm, I actually had a classical uh, the foundation myself. So in the same way that we have like 11 or 12 or 13 languages, we are cosmopolitan, is, uh, we are cosmopolitan in the, the sense that we get to imbibe all these various musical ideas. And I think uh, there's a great opportunity um, for new music as a, to really, really renew itself by even opening up more and more uh, opportunities for different kind of things. I think that is the true mirror, a uh, true reflection of what being in South African or being in South Africa means. It, you know, it's that, like you were saying, it, it is a confluence, it's a, you know, it is a concoction. It is a, it, it's, it's a whole mixture of everything. And I, I hope also that you know, the inclusion is not just simply for performances that I hope that it will water down 
you know, into universities and, and, and into classroom music, where perhaps the basis of our music tutelage will be on South African musicness and, and not simply all American jazz or, or Western music. And I think I'm um, giving me, I was, I was really impressed in the sense that I felt that I have something that I can contribute that is respectable. And obviously I was, I was amazed. I mean, I was playing Todd Machigas' music on Todd Machigas' piano, uh, on Todd Machigas' 100th anniversary. I mean, it couldn't, I couldn't get much more privileged than that. I mean, this that music of King Kong has has been premiered in 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 London like sixty years ago in nineteen sixty one. Uh, of course, it was premiered premiered in South Africa two years before that, and um, that it was actually played in in a township in a town where 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 black people were displaced, which was Safar Town. So it was almost like we are reclaiming that kind of musical ethos. And, 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 and bringing it back to ourselves. I think in itself, it is an act of, of decolonization. It's an act of re-identifying with our own. And I think if, if, if you know, South African new music, as, um, new music South Africa keeps on granting such opportunities, we might have much more, a much more richer heritage and a much more richer future musically. Th th thank you, Yonela, for saying that. I think that, that, I mean, I couldn't agree more with, with what you said, but I think it's also interesting to note, like you were saying that, you know, Western music is always, well, first of all, Western music is always looked to, you know, to, as the thing that should be learned. Uh, but at the same time, of course, you also are West, trained in Western music and in jazz. And it, it, there is no actually contradiction between those things. Like when I was in uh, studying in Vienna, they were always telling me, well, you can play classical or you can play jazz, but one of, if you do one, it's going to ruin your, your, your playing of the other. And I always thought that was completely, uh, that, that was complete nonsense. I mean, I think that you, uh, you, you learn very much from each one for the other, but you were saying it's belated and I completely agree with you. And at the same time, it also seems to be ahead of its time because uh, I've, you know, I've, I've been trying to bring the idea of uh, new music composition based on African music into universities for years now. And I mean, now I'm involved with the University of Pretoria and I'm, I'm trying there and I hope it'll be more successful because there's actually some very open-minded people there, but it's, it's been a very, very difficult thing to do just because people don't seem to understand what this is supposed to be. And it's so bizarre because I think one of the reasons why uh, uh, you know, Western music seems to be the thing that is erudite is because uh, one would think that uh, institutions of higher learning are in the, in the West. But I mean, let's not forget that one of the oldest universities in the world is was founded in, in Timbuktu, so very much in Africa. Uh, and Africa has an incredible history of institutions of higher learning. And I, I think, you know, maybe just to... to, to, to uh, I don't want to talk long here, but for example, a couple of years ago, a, a British musicologist told me that he is um, giving workshops for young African musicologists for them to develop the skills uh, so that their writings can be accepted for publication in the British and American uh, musicological journals that people aspire to being published. And I, my reaction to that was, um, well, that's great, but how about helping musicologists in Africa start journals in Africa that British and American musicologists want to get published in. Because I mm. think we need the reciprocity uh, that, you know, Africa too is a thing that, that others will as aspire to. And uh, I think that way uh, Africa will get the respect that it, uh, that it deserves as, a, as an incredibly important, uh, uh, vital place for culture in the world, I think. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long fight uh, and it's belated and it seems to be ahead of its time at the same time. And that's very frustrating, but we have to that's, do it in the now. And that's interesting, <laughs> actually. Sorry, just to, just to jump in there. Um, I'm done. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just the last thing. I, I, I'm, I'm just saying also with, you know, as, as a tribute also to the other fallen heroes now with this COVID. I mean, a person like Mzilika um, um, it, it um, reminds me of a lot of, you know, a lot of choral composers, uh, black choral composers, who, whose compositional ability was generally limited to, to, to choralism. And, you know, uh, whether there is, you know, such a possibility of understanding them as, you know, mere composers or just people that are arrangers, you know, that the same thing again of, 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 of valuing where, for example, he could, all, you know, a choral composer can only be taken to be a full composer if he's able to, if he's able to orchestrate, for example. I mean, it was, it, it's very interesting that um, even if um, Zilgaz Kumano was able to, to write stuff from Princess Makoko, um, you know, needed help, needed somebody else to, to, to kind of like legitimize that kind of, that kind of conceptualization. A person, in fact, even with Todd Majigiza, with, with his King Kong, because I was playing music, um, from that uh, 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 jazz opera called King Kong. Uh, there was a time, I, I suppose, I mean, we need time, some time to talk about these other things where now the music seems to be, seemed to be moving out of his hands because there were people now that were reorchestrating uh, some of his stuff. And, and, and if you listen to the original of, of Todd, you find that most of that work wasn't, uh, most of the interpretation really didn't quite live and didn't quite uh, live up to uh, Todd Machigiza's music. In, in, in that respect, in fact, I think by, by restudying that, that music of, 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 of Todd Machigiza and playing it again at, the, at, 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 this con at this conference or at this event, it was a, I, you know, it's a, it's a way of, of, of reappreciating him as well as a composer as much as, as, as he was a performer, you know? And I think we must appreciate that piano being there, not because it was an instrument that he could use to play, but because like any other composer, it was probably an instrument that he used also to compose. Mm. Mm. Uh, thank you, um, Yonela. I think um, there are uh, very, very interesting um, ideas that are springing up from from this discussion. I mean, I didn't necessarily plan it to go this way, but I'm really happy that we um, that ideas um, are coming through. And just as you were saying, I was uh, I was speaking to Cameron. I didn't realize that. Um, um, so much had happened, you know, with the fallen heroes, um, and it's, and I think it's to their, and um, it's to their. I don't know what that word is that we, we continue to push forward with works like this, you know, bringing, um, making sure that African music is at the core. The ideas about African music and how to grow it, you know, for me personally, and Lucas, I think you said this earlier that what is African music anyway, you know, it can, it can be very, very difficult to describe, you know, and for me, what I, I mean, for the sake of, of uh, maybe writing a publication or, or, or discussing um, musicology in musicological circle, I always try to create a framework, all right, because no matter how much and no matter how much framework you create, there will always be exceptions you get. So for example, I describe Nigerian music as music made by Nigerians for Nigerians. You know, there's, there's much, you know, you can say so much beyond that, but for whatever I wanna do, I always try to create framework. So thank you so much. Um, um, Dimitri, 
um, um, just to bring you back into the discussion, you might have uh, spoken about this before, but I would really just like to pick your mind a little bit more. And this is just because, of course, I'm part of New Music Essay, and I think probably this will help us going forward. And because we also hope to continue to have you working with us, I would like to know, um, and by extension to um, to other people, um, other performers, one is. Um, so looking back, looking back at the whole process and the product, you know, the, the process of creating the work um, that you've done, and what were those moments that really stood out for you, all right, um, that makes this endeavor a worthwhile one, and why? You know, and by extension, you know, I would want to find out from other performers as well. I mean, somebody like Tisset, so you don't get uh, that you were playing that Mozart piece. You know, what <laughs> what was that like to to put to be? Uh, I think it was Cameron that was asking that question there, saying what. Uh, let me just check what Cameron was saying there. That what was it like to play the Mozart with Waldo in that concert next to Imsikiza? and Van Berg and Vodoris, you know, but Tissetso will get to you. But for me, um, as I said, just being on the board of NMSA, I would like to know from Dimitri, you know, what are those things that, what worked for you, you know, and in, what were those moments and why, were, why did those things work? Uh, okay, so um, I'm just trying to find something that I wrote uh, um, towards the piece uh, to actually tell you exactly. Um, okay. You know, involuntary perceptions cross over between senses uh, and uh, sensory triggers that consistently are predict. Uh, predict uh, and predictability, sorry, sensory triggers and consistently predictability cause interplay between senses. So um, the, the time you see, like for instance, this, the time you notice a specific chord playing on the violin, say A, uh, you see the color red, for instance. So when, uh, when I was translating the the tapestry colors into notation uh, that's what was occurring to me that every time i was visualizing uh, the specific string uh, that was performing uh, the sound of the string uh, the 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 color red uh, emerged it's a kind of like synesthesia which you which very rare mm. and few people experience uh, so, in other words, when playing the note, uh, all people see red, for instance, uh, that's very rare, uh, but uh, th that is a um, psychological aspect of uh, color versus uh, p uh, notation. Um, that's what I experienced as well. And also that the, the piece, Pandaray, was in, in all its magnitude and everything so it was about 19 minutes long but when i listened to it again and again uh, i reduced it to eight minutes so when i was listening to it uh, a 19 minute piece it felt like eight minutes that went by so the whole thing of collapsing within itself the whole piece unfolds within itself uh, and uh, that's why I came up with this term, Pandaray, because um, everything, everything in nature is flux. So uh, everything gets eaten by its own self. And, and so it progresses and, and rolls uh, forward. So those were the, uh, the moments that um, I could say uh, were um, unbelievable for me mm. while composing the piece. Mm. Mm. And, and you um, see, just, the other thing that I wanted yep. to say to you is 
uh, that uh, just the last thing that I want to say is that we, we must never forget as individuals that whatever, um, okay, all the roads, all the buildings, everything that we see in nature that we create, not that's created, not the birds and the trees and everything, that we create roads, bridges, uh, ships, cars, so forth, is a mirror image of our mind, of ourselves. So mm. we don't realize that, but imagine this, all the ports, uh, all the, the roads linking to specific um, uh, places and that could be your bloodstream. Your bloodstream, like the way mm. your blood flows, so, mm. so that gets extended. I don't know whether it's intentional, but that's how it is. So when I say I work with data, it's nothing inorganic. It's part of an organic process that gets unfolded to come to the end result of music. Mm. Wow. That's wow. how I perceive it. Wow. Everything in nature is a mirror image of ourselves that we've created. Robots, uh, the new technologies like um, hand movements, gestures, it's all, it, what does it all mean? It all means that uh, um, we interplay with ourselves. Yeah. You see, so when mm. you have a gesture uh, on stage uh, that you can control electronically, uh, mm. uh, it's, it's a primal source. It's also primal. It's also a bridge of communication between primal cultures and modern composers. So we're all in a communication mode right through. We cannot separate ourselves. We're totally in communication. So uh, um, mm. everything is a mirror image of ourselves. No matter how mm. we never thought mm. of it, but it is. Just think of that, for, uh, and then it's very powerful. It's a very powerful conceptualization. Definitely, I I am definitely going to be <laughs> to be thinking of this because yeah. as you speak, as you speak, I know you use examples of you know cars, and I mean I think this, this is really deep for me because I mean the idea that the things that we create also come from in us. You know, and that could be a reflection of anything. What we see could be a reflection of anything within us. You know, it's it's quite deep for me. And I'm also beginning to think now, you know, I mean, Beethoven wrote nine symphonies. You know, where did that come from? You know, seeing yes. works coming, you know, seeing the works that people do, the works that they create as a reflection of them. I think it's a... It's a very powerful way to look at um, to look at this in general. In general, um, Lucas, yes. it looks like you you really want, you want to pop in something there. Uh, no, I was just uh, asking uh, whether like how much time we have, whether we're up against any any exact time limit. I I was just this is yeah. completely off now. So uh, I was just going to say that I think before we end uh, the webinar. Um, however much time we still have, that uh, I think it would also be good to talk about the call for scores that we had and the piece by Henrik van Blerk and maybe uh, ask uh, Dissetso and Waldo about that. And um, yeah, 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 definitely. That was going to be the, the next thing as we said prior to that. But I'll give you time to speak about those parts that you, you want to speak about, Lucas. Um, so I think probably um, Tisetso and Waldo can jump in here to speak about um, their work, Van Beck. And the Mozart as well, eh? not to forget that. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Lucas. Um, can so Waldo be, go first? Um, Tisetso, yeah, right. Yeah, well, I mean... Well, um, Waldo, do you mind going first? Uh, she said so. Why don't you go first? I mean, 
questions questions regarding the 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 two works that that Tissetso and I did together I mean the front front black um I think it was called can you hear bird if I'm correct um it's a, it's a duo for violin and viola um a really really beautiful beautiful piece of music the sort of an, an kind of an ABA structure um you know lots of the, the exact kind of content that I'm that I'm a fan of you know lots of lots of long notes and lots of space um in the in the opening section um where it's sort of pretty much a call and response between the between the viola and the and the violin and then moving into a sort of a more kind of a an arpeggiated section um which starts starts off starts off if i remember correctly starts starts off in the violin and the viola then joins at a particular point um and but then after after i think after about about eight bars his pattern then shifts so it Cre created a bit of a bit of uh, uh, a couple of small headaches for Tisetsu, but he nailed it anyway. Um, yeah, um, Tisetsu, you want to jump in? Hello. Hello. Yeah, he's there, uh, Waldo, to speak to you. Sorry, it felt like everybody disappeared. Um, he said so? He said so is muted. I think I think his yeah. video is frozen. I don't know if his network is, is quite with us anymore. Yeah, I, 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 I would think maybe that's the case. Um, I was desperate to ask him what he felt about the um the mozart and i mean i i i had a comment from someone saying um they wondered if you know waldo and tisetso could have kind of manipulated the mozart in some way or improvised around it so that it sort of fit in this modern uh set of of music I wondered what you guys thought of that as 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 classical players, but also you know players of new music, modern music. Um, yeah, shall I shall I chime in over there on 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 that? Go for point? it. Um, yeah, because I think I think it was I remember Dimitri actually chatting to me about about that idea. Um, with well, he 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 mentioned in one of our many discussions quite briefly as he thought that he wondered what it might be like if you know that that piece was somehow electronically manipulated for for example you know creating a you know an, an electronic acoustic duo or in this case then i get i guess maybe even a trio um i would have been you know perfectly perfectly game for that even even for the for the idea of perhaps a little more of an improvisatory approach to it, um, but um, you know, I think we 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 sort of we sort of also ran short on time when it came to came to preparations. Um, it's definitely something that that I do do think. Well, if if you guys will have Tisetso and me back in future, that that we should that we should bear bear that approach in mind because I know I'm pretty sure Tisetso would also be 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 very keen on that. I mean, he's, he's, he's a legend. Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about him <laughs> because he's not there. <laughs> I don't yeah, think. I think, there, Shame, I think he seems to disappear and come back. The poor guy is probably <laughs> having trouble with, with, with signal. Um, yeah. Yeah. His network has dropped out. Um, and and Ade, Ade has just run himself to the bathroom, so that's why I'm sort of jumping on you just to say hi. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> it's been a fascinating conversation. I I, I was wondering where this was going to go. 
um, <laughs> because uh, we, we we got it sort of really technical, and we've we've talked about um, yeah a lot of a lot of different things, um, and that's fantastic. Um, I think we are good to start wrapping up the conversation. Um, so final comments from everyone would be nice. Looks like Tisetso is, is, is back on. Oh, yes. And, and Tisetso, you're welcome to jump in if you're there. Cameron, what was oh. that last piece that, we, that was played at concert one? Uh, that was for violin. <coughs> uh, I can't remember the other in instrumentation. Van Blerk. The Van Blerk? Was it Van Blerk? Oh. We should um, talk that about that too for a moment. Uh, the yeah, last piece. Violin duo. Um, and, and then we also had Yonella <coughs> ending the concert um, with that solo piano. Um, and then, you know, the, the most... Uh, the Mozart and, and um, uh, the improvised stuff was sort of interspersed in between it all. The final, the final work was, was, was actually an improvised set from Yonella. Uh, yeah. It was um, an Afrikaans guy that lived yeah. in the area. Van Black. Van Black, okay. And what was the piece called? Do you remember? Can you Some... hear me bird, I think? Oh, a bird. Yeah, so like then bird. you hear yeah. a comma bird singular. And and just to say that this the the, the adventure is linked online to the recording of this concert. So for those who are on Facebook, um, I've I've also posted something. But um, all of our concerts can be found on the Facebook page, um, New Music SA. Um, I was sort of wondering if if we would jump in and listen to a bit, but it's very hard in 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 these kinds of settings, um, unless yeah. we have a specific thing in mind. Lucas, Cameron, maybe maybe sorry to 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 interrupt you. Uh, I just wanted to say maybe we should also say here that we had a call for scores. So the each one of these three concerts in the digital Indava had certain musicians playing, and then we we had a call for scores where we were asking composers to send in pieces that they had that would be possible to, to play with the, the, the um, basically the, the, the musicians that were at each one of the concerts and the musicians then selected um, the, 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 the pieces that they played. So there was an entry for this uh, possibility of violin duo uh, by Hendrik van Blerk and uh, uh, and Tizetso and Waldo selected to, to perform that piece. And I thought that it was a very nice addition to the program. Yes. Mm. Absolutely, it was fantastic. And, and good okay. to meet Hendrik for the first time, a New Music SA member. Um, and we had, we had Richard and Sue Cock in the audience and they had worked together many years ago as well. So it was, it was, a, it was interesting. All of this in the middle of COVID times, um, and uh, yeah, at the Trevor Huddleston Memorial Center what was a, a fascinating day. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Is um, Tisetsu in now um, or can we begin to round up? Um, I'm not sure if there are questions, uh, people have questions, further questions, any additions? I don't see any more um, questions, Ade, um, and okay. Tisetso is off again, so we won't okay. we won't be hearing from him. Um, okay. So yeah, good good to round up in whatever way you think is best. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, for me, from my side, um, it will be just to say thank you um, to to everyone. Um, first of all, I think um, it will be nice. Uh, all the all the sponsors thank you to um the national art festival people for for being part of this thanks to uh, of course camera <laughs> for just uh, being a very strong pull behind and um dimitri uh i think congratulations for your work 
and also on your 60th birthday i hope i get to be 60 and past 60. <laughs> <laughs> hey, th thank you you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's it i think it's i think new music essay is onto something great here and i'm really glad to be part of it so thank you everyone thank you waldo i know i see you a lot more than seeing you here in <laughs> <laughs> in just new music essay and um lucas thanks you know for also being a good guide in all this i Hold don't know the... sorry okay sorry i don't want to cut yeah. you off we have a delay I do. oh great stuff oh sorry delay sorry i cut you off it's because we have a delay so i i i i'm sorry to cut you off i didn't mean to do that oh okay okay so i was just saying thank you to to you as well you know for being there helping you know to to bring in some great depth in in the question asking thanks for Yunela. Yunela, i think you raised some very very important issues there you know there's a lot i think there's a lot for me to go and think more about with the things that i've heard you know um, um from uh, uh the guys i mean the performance and the composer taking this in in a, uh, to a very deep um, uh, place, you know, and I'm not sure who is on Facebook. Um, just to say thanks to everyone for joining us. To said so, thanks for joining us. Um, I see the the National Arts Festival people, but I don't know who else is here. At least on Zoom, I see Colossa. Um, Cameron, Colossa <laughs> from N N A F team. So, uh, yeah, oh, thanks, oh, thanks oh, to okay. you guys there for handling all of this. Oh, so, okay, so, and, um, yeah, to so say for me, we, <laughs> yep, yes, continue. It's fine. Uh, I was just going to say that we are doing another one of these next week. Um, a uh, different panel, panel from cons concert number two. Um, so that's Hannes Talyat, the composer, who's currently in Vienna, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, obviously, um, Monet van Heerden on clarinet um, and Martelise. Ma uh, and she, <laughs> why have I gone blank on her surname? I've, I've known her for so long. <laughs> Marta de Vries. De Vries. Marta. Marta de Vries. Um, yeah. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, join us if you can. It's likely we'll we'll still be in our, our lockdown here. So, um, if you if you're free at the, at that time, then join us. It's five p.m. next week, and you can sign up also on the National Arts Festival um, event page. Um, hey, Cameron. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I just yeah. I'm, 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 I'd like to to you know to 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 thank this chance, man, and to the, the you know the platform to to talk about composition. I don't really know much about composition, but I am delighted that I'm here in 2021. It was the first time I went into the, uh, at the music, uh, New Music uh, South Africa event was in 2002. And I was actually uh, urged on and, and encouraged by Christine Lucci at the time. Uh, so, you know, I think I can see that I've gone somewhere. It's, it's beautiful to kind of, return after almost 20 years of new, new music as a, and to have it, a, a chance to contribute and to react on, the, you know, the workshops that I received that time in 2000 and, and uh, 2003, actually, uh, when I went there as a young student composer. And I see that the dynamics have changed. And I must say, I'm happy that even this year, the logistics of organizing, it was quite nice. There was no glitches. Everybody was informed in time. Everything was great, and of course, like everybody else have said, I I look forward to be involved again when next year there is a chance. Thanks everybody. Thanks to Valdo. He came through and rehearsed. Thank you, Yonela. Your His music was never. Yeah, you know, my Chigizos music never. I don't think there's, there was a violin uh, performance um, that uh, played the melody. So it was nice to actually come and share and to see you learn the music and transcribe it and and take it back to back back home you know back to the people and uh, i like that thanks a lot thank you yeah thank you uh, thank you 
Thank you, Yonela. I think that your contributions to this concert were extremely important. I think you know an awful lot about composition. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, I'm hoping that, that uh, we can continue this collaboration. I'm, I'm speaking now, I'm a member of the board of New Music SA. I'm now, can, of course, can't decide these kinds of things on my own, but I, I would <laughs> assume that, that the rest of the board is in agreement with me on this. Uh, that we definitely should, you know, everybody who's been involved in this concert, I have to say, you know, this is supposed to be like a new start for a new music essay. And it's just kind of like, uh, you know, everybody who's been involved here, I'm hoping that we can continue to, uh, to, to work with. So um, thank you very much. And then by the way, in two weeks, we have Neil Muyanga and others at a similar webinar, I should also add. So, Hannes Tarja, that's the commission composer next week, and then two weeks from now, uh, Neo Muyanga. That's right. Thanks for adding that in there, Lucas. And after that, we have a, a four-week series of music business workshops. Um, and I, I've just seen you, yeah, Henriette Chorn from the Samra Foundation. It's so good to have had you with us. I didn't realize you were here. Um, but, well, this is um, going to be a great series. Thank you to all of you at Samra. Um, and Henriette especially. Um, and and as I said earlier, this is all available on Facebook and um, you'll find all the necessary info there. Um, so I think wish you all a good evening in South Africa and Lucas, a good day. And, um, and keep safe and healthy, everyone. Yeah. Thank Indeed. you. Please take care. Thank all you, guys. Right. Thank you, Cameron. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Right. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Now, if you're not in VTA, thanks.